The 1896 Summer Olympics, officially known as the Games of the First Olympiad, was a multi-sport event held in Athens, Greece, from 6 to 15 April 1896. It was the first International Olympic Games held in the modern era, because ancient Greece was the birthplace of the Olympic Games. Athens was considered to be an appropriate choice to stage the inaugural modern games. It was unanimously chosen as the host city during a congress organized by Pierre de Coubertin, a French pedagogue and historian, in Paris. On 23 June 1894, the International Olympic Committee was also instituted during this congress. Despite many obstacles and setbacks, the 1896 Olympics were regarded as a great success. The Games had the largest international participation of any sporting event to that date. The Panathinaiko Stadium, the only Olympic stadium used in the 1800s, overflowed with the largest crowd ever to watch a sporting event. The highlight for the Greeks was the marathon victory by their compatriots Spyride and Lewis. The most successful competitor was German wrestler and gymnast Karl Schumann, who won four events. After the Games, Kubatan and the IOC were petitioned by several prominent figures, including Greece's King George and some of the American competitors in Athens, to hold all the following Games in Athens. However, the 1900 Summer Olympics were already planned for Paris and, except for the intercalated Games of 1906. The Olympics did not return to Greece until the 2004 Summer Olympics, 108 years later, reviving the Games. During the 19th century, several small-scale sports festivals across Europe were named after the ancient Olympic Games. The 1870 Olympics at the Panathinaik Stadium, which had been refurbished for the occasion, had an audience of 30,000 people. Kubatan adopted Dr. William Penny Brooks' idea to establish a multinational and multi-sport event. The ancient games only allowed free male athletes of Greek origin to participate. In 1890, Kubatan wrote an article in La Revue Athletiquette, which espoused the importance of Much Wenlock, a rural market town in the English county of Shropshire. It was here that, in October 1850, the local physician William Penny Brooks had founded the Wenlock Olympian Games, a festival of sports and recreations that included athletics and team sports, such as cricket, football and quoits. Kubatan also took inspiration from the earlier Greek games organized under the name of Olympics by businessmen and philanthropists evangelized Zappas. In 1859, 1870 and 1875, the 1896 Athens Games was funded by the legacies of evangelized Zappas and his cousin Konstantinos Zappas and by George Averoff who had been specifically requested by the Greek government through Crown Prince Constantine, to sponsor the second refurbishment of the Panathinaiko Stadium. This the Greek government did despite the fact that the cost of refurbishing the stadium in marble had already been funded in full by Evangelize. Zappas 40 years earlier, on 18 June 1894, Kubatan organized a congress at the Sorbonne, Paris to present his plans to representatives of sports societies from 11 countries. Following his proposal's acceptance by the Congress, a date for the first modern Olympic Games needed to be chosen. Kubatan suggested that the Games be held concurrently with the 1900 Universal Exposition of Paris. Concerned that a six-year waiting period might lessen public interest, Congress members opted instead to hold the inaugural Games in 1896. With the date established, members of the Congress turned their attention to the selection of a host city. It remains a mystery how Athens was finally chosen to host the inaugural Games. In the following years both Kubatan and Demetrius Vikelis would offer recollections of the selection process that contradicted the official minutes of the Congress. Most accounts hold that several congressmen first proposed London as the location, but Kubatan dissented. After a brief discussion with Vikelis, who represented Greece, Kubatan suggested Athens. 
Vic Ellis made the Athens proposal official on 23 June, and since Greece had been the original home of the Olympics, the Congress unanimously approved the decision. Vic Ellis was then elected the first president of the newly established International Olympic Committee organization. News that the Olympic Games would return to Greece was well received by the Greek public media and royal family. According to Kubatan, the Crown Prince Constantine learned with great pleasure that the Games will be inaugurated in Athens. Kubatan went on to confirm that the King and the Crown Prince will confer their patronage on the holding of these Games. Constantine later conferred more than that. He eagerly assumed the presidency of the 1896 Organizing Committee. However, the country had financial troubles and was in political turmoil. The job of Prime Minister alternated between Charolaus Tripoupas and Theodorus de Ligianus frequently during the last years of the 19th century. Because of this financial and political instability, both Prime Minister Tripoupas and Stephanos Dragoumas, the president of the Zappas Olympic Committee, which had attempted to organize a series of national Olympiads, believed that Greece could not host the event. In late 1894, the organizing committee under Stefanos Skolaudis presented a report that the cost of the Games would be three times higher than originally estimated by Kubatan. They concluded the Games could not be held, and offered their resignation. The total cost of the Games was 10,000 zero-gold drachmas. With the prospect of reviving the Olympic Games very much in doubt, Kubatan and Vikelis commenced a campaign to keep the Olympic movement alive. Their efforts culminated on 7 January 1895 when Vikelis announced that Crown Prince Constantine would assume the presidency of the organizing committee. His first responsibility was to raise the funds necessary to host the Games. He relied on the patriotism of the Greek people to motivate them to provide the required finances. Constantine's enthusiasm sparked a wave of contributions from the Greek public. This grassroots effort raised 330,000 drachmas. A special set of postage stamps were commissioned, the sale of which raised 400,000 drachmas. Ticket sales added 200,000 drachmas. At the request of Constantine, businessman George Averoff agreed to pay for the restoration of the Panathinaiko Stadium. Averoff would donate 782,000 drachmas to this project. As a tribute to his generosity, a statue of Averoff was constructed and unveiled on 5 April 1896 outside the stadium. It stands there to this day. Some of the athletes would take part in the Games because they happened to be in Athens at the time the Games were held, either on holiday or for work. A designated Olympic village for the athletes did not appear until the 1932 Summer Olympics. Consequently, the athletes had to provide their own lodging. The first regulation voted on by the new IOC in 1894 was to allow only amateur athletes to participate in the Olympic Games. The various contests were thus held under amateur regulations with the exception of fencing matches. The rules and regulations were not uniform, so the organizing committee had to choose among the codes of the various national athletic associations. The jury, the referees and the game director bore the same names as in antiquity. Prince George acted as final referee. According to Kubatan, his presence gave weight and authority to the decisions of the F.O.R.'s venues. Calendar Opening Ceremony On 6 April, the Games of the First Olympiad were officially opened. It was Easter Monday for both the Western and Eastern Christian churches and the anniversary of Greece's independence. The Panathinaiko Stadium was filled with an estimated 80,000 spectators, including King George I of Greece, his wife Olga, and their sons. Most of the competing athletes were aligned on the infield, grouped by nation. After a speech by the president of the organizing committee, Crown Prince Constantine, his father officially opened the Games. I declare the opening of the first International Olympic Games in Athens. 
Long live the nation. Long live the Greek people. Afterwards, nine bands and 150 choir singers performed an Olympic hymn, composed by Spyride and Samaras, with words by poet Kostas Palimas. Thereafter, a variety of musical offerings provided the backgrounds to the opening ceremonies until 1960. Since which time the Samaras Palimas composition has become the official Olympic anthem. Other elements of current Olympic opening ceremonies were initiated later. The Olympic flame was first lit in 1928. The first athlete's oath was sworn at the 1920 Summer Olympics, and the first official's oath was taken at the 1972 Olympic Games. Events at the 1894 Sorbonne Congress, a large roster of sports were suggested for the program in Athens. The first official announcements regarding the sporting events to be held featured sports such as football and cricket. But these plans were never finalized, and these sports did not make the final list for the Games. Rowing and yachting were scheduled, but had to be cancelled due to poor weather on the planned day of competition. As a result, the 1896 Summer Olympics program featured nine sports encompassing ten disciplines and 43 events. The number of events in each discipline is noted in parentheses. Athletics, cycling road track, fencing, gymnastics, sailing, shooting, swimming, tennis, weightlifting, wrestling, athletics. The athletics events had the most international field of any of the sports. The major highlight was the marathon, held for the first time in international competition. Spiride and Lewis, a previously unrecognized water carrier, won the event to become the only Greek athletics champion and a national hero. Although Greece had been favored to win the discus and the shot put, the best Greek athletes finished just behind the American Robert Garrett in both events. No world records were set, as few top international competitors had elected to compete. In addition, the curves of the track were very tight, making fast times in the running events virtually impossible. Despite this, Thomas Burke, of the United States, won the 100-meter race in 12.0 seconds and the 400-meter race in 54.2 seconds. Burke was the only one who used the crouch start, confusing the jury. Eventually, he was allowed to start from this uncomfortable position. Australian competitor Edwin Flack came to Athens to watch the Games but decided to compete in the athletics. He won two races, the 800m and the 1500m. Chile claims one athlete, Luis Subacaso, competed for the nation at the 1896 Summer Olympics. This makes Chile one of the 14 nations to appear at the inaugural Summer Olympic Games. Subicaso's results are not listed in the official report, though that report typically includes only winners and Subicaso won no medals. Recently, a study commissioned to Chilean forensic police decided that Subicaso would be the participant in a famous photo of 100 meters second series. Cycling The rules of the International Cycling Association were used for the cycling competitions. The track cycling events were held at the newly built Neo Phaleron Velodrome. Only one road event was held, a race from Athens to Marathon and back. In the track events, the best cyclist was Frenchman Paul Masson, who won the one-lap time trial, the sprint event, and the 10,000 meters. In the 100 km event, Masson entered as a pacemaker for his compatriot Elie Acuto and Flamengue. Flamengue won the event, after a fall, and after stopping to wait for his Greek opponent Georgios Coletus to fix a mechanical problem. The Austrian fencer Adolf Schmal won the 12-hour race, which was completed by only two cyclists, while the road race event was won by Aristides Constantinidis. Fencing The fencing events were held in the Zapaeon, which built with money evangelized Zappers had given to revive the ancient Olympic Games, had never seen any athletic contests before. Unlike other sports, professionals were allowed to compete in fencing, though in a separate event. These professionals were considered gentlemen athletes, just as the amateurs. 
Four events were scheduled, but the EAQT PAQT event was cancelled for unknown reasons. The foil event was won by a Frenchman, Eugene Henry Gravelotta, who beat his countryman, Henry Callet, in the final. The other two events, the Sabre and the Masters foil, were won by Greek fences. Leonidas Piergos, who won the latter event, became the first Greek Olympic champion in the modern era. Gymnastics The gymnastics competition was carried out on the infield of the Panathinaiko Stadium. Germany had sent an 11-man team, which won five of the eight events, including both team events. In the team event on a horizontal bar, the German team was unopposed. Three Germans added individual titles. Hermann Wayne Gartner won the horizontal bar event, Alfred Flatow won the parallel bars, and Carl Schumann, who also competed successfully in wrestling, won the vault. Louis Zutter, a Swiss gymnast, won the pommel horse, while Greeks Ioannis Mitropoulos and Nikolaos Andriakopoulos were victorious in the rings and rope climbing events, respectively. Sailing A regatta of sailing boats was on the program of the Games of the First Olympiad for 31 March 1896. However this event had to be given up. The official English report states, the regatta could not take place because some special boats embarkation had not been provided for. Carol Ambos Anino, the Olympic Games BC, 776. A.D. 1896 The German version gives a bit more clues. Die Wettkampfer im Segeln Word und Fur Eitelt, da man weder beeuns die besondren Boot da Furbesass, noch fremde bewerber sich gemelde hatten. Same author, same source. So no boats available from Greece and no foreign entries. Thus that ends the first edition of sailing at the Summer Olympics. Shooting held at a range at Calathea, the shooting competition consisted of five events, two using a rifle and three with the pistol. The first event, the military rifle, was won by Pantelis Karasedis, the only competitor to hit the target with all of his shots. The second event, for military pistols, was dominated by two American brothers. John and Sumner Payne became the first siblings to finish first and second in the same event. To avoid embarrassing their hosts, the brothers decided that only one of them would compete in the next pistol event, the free pistol. Sumner Payne won that event, thereby becoming the first relative of an Olympic champion to become Olympic champion himself. The Payne brothers did not compete in the 25-meter pistol event, as the event judges determined that their weapons were not of the required caliber. In their absence, Johannes Frank Audish won. The final event, the free rifle, began on the same day. However, the event could not be completed due to darkness and was finalized the next morning, when Georgios Orphanidis was crowned the champion. Swimming The swimming competition was held in the open sea because the organizers had refused to spend the money necessary for a specially constructed stadium. Nearly 20,000 spectators lined the Bay of Zia off the Piraeus coast to watch the events. The water in the bay was cold, and the competitors suffered during their races. There were three open events, in addition to a special event open only to Greek sailors, all of which were held on the same day. For Alfred Hajos of Hungary, this meant he could only compete in two of the events, as they were held too close together, which made it impossible for him to adequately recuperate. Nevertheless, he won the two events in which he swam, the 112-100 meter freestyle. Hajos later became one of only two Olympians to win a medal in both the athletic and artistic competitions. When he won a silver medal for architecture in 1924, the 500 meter freestyle was won by Austrian swimmer Paul Newman, who defeated his opponents by more than a minute and a half. Tennis Although tennis was already a major sport by the end of the 19th century, none of the top players turned up for the tournament in Athens. The competition was held at the courts of the Athens Lawn Tennis Club, and the infield of the velodrome used for the cycling events. 
John Pius Boland, who won the event, had been entered in the competition by a fellow student of his at Oxford, the Greek, Constantinos Manos. As a member of the Athens Lawn Tennis Subcommittee, Manos had been trying, with the assistance of Boland, to recruit competitors for the Athens Games from among the sporting circles of Oxford University. In the first round, Boland defeated Friedrich Schorn, a promising tennis player from Hamburg, who had been eliminated in the 100-meter sprint competition. Boland and Schorn decided to team up for the doubles event in which they reached the final and defeated their Greek and Egyptian opponents after losing the first set. Weightlifting The sport of weightlifting was still young in 1896, and the rules differed from those in use today. Competitions were held outdoors, in the infield of the main stadium, and there were no weight limits. The first event was held in a style now known as the clean and jerk. Two competitors stood out. Scotsman Launston Elliott and Viggo Jensen of Denmark. Both of them lifted the same weight, but the jury, with Prince George as the chairman, ruled that Jensen had done so in a better style. The British delegation, unfamiliar with this tie-breaking rule, lodged a protest. The lifters were eventually allowed to make further attempts, but neither lifter improved, and Jensine was declared the champion. Elliot got his revenge in the one-hand lift event, which was held immediately after the two-handed one. Jensen had been slightly injured during his last two-handed attempt, and was no match for Elliot, who won the competition easily. The Greek audience was charmed by the Scottish victor, whom they considered very attractive. A curious incident occurred during the weightlifting event. A servant was ordered to remove the weights, which appeared to be a difficult task for him. Prince George came to his assistance. He picked up the weight and threw it a considerable distance with ease, to the delight of the crowd. Wrestling No weight classes existed for the wrestling competition, held in the Panathinaiko Stadium, which meant that there would only be one winner among competitors of all sizes. The rules used were similar to modern Greco-Roman wrestling, although there was no time limit, and not all leg holds were forbidden. Apart from the two Greek contestants, all the competitors had previously been active in other sports. Weightlifting champion Launston Elliott faced gymnastics champion Carl Schumann. The latter won and advanced into the final, where he met Georgios Cetas, who had previously defeated Stefanos Christopoulos. Darkness forced the final match to be suspended after 40 minutes, it was continued the following day, when Schumann needed only 15 minutes to finish the bout.